You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Let's now talk the big story in Nigeria at the moment. It's big business. Nigeria's GDP grew by 0.11% in the fourth quarter of 2020. And that's from the 6.11% contraction in the third quarter. This has now signaled a gradual recovery from the recession. Uh, now, this figure is according to the latest released by the Nigeria, the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS. The MBS says the growth represented the first positive quarterly growth in the last three quarters. And this performance, when you compare that to the fourth quarter in 2019, you know, which recorded an aggregate of 39.577 billion naira, represented a year-on-year -year nominal growth rate of 10.07%. The MBS classified the Nigerian economy into the oil and non-oil sectors. And you know, one of the major push of the GDP is growth in the non-oil sector. We've now invited uh, Shegun Shokpito, an economist, to help us make sense of this. Good morning, Mr. Shokpito, and thanks for joining us. Good morning, um, thanks for having me. All right. So as an economist, what factors would you attribute to Nigeria's recovery from recession and our GDP growth? Um, so so uh, most analysts, um, the World Bank, the IMF, um, even the federal government itself, the Minister of Finance had said, um, had expected that we're going to exit the recession by the first quarter of 2021. Um, and the reason they gave for that was you know, what brought us into the recession in the first place uh, was simply two factors. It was the COVID-19 um, and the lockdown and the shutdown of the economic activity that followed that, um, not just in Nigeria, all over the world. Um, and also, uh, by some coincidence of events, uh, the crash in crude oil prices. The crash in crude oil prices was tied to COVID-19 to a certain degree, because what that did was it, everything shut down across the world and you know there was no need for energy. Uh, energy was simply not required for almost three to four months. So no demand for oil, stockpile um, um, uh, um, of um, crude oil inventories grew all over the world and that brought prices down. At a point last year, uh, crude oil prices sank below zero for the first time ever in the history of the whole world, you know. So, so the recession was inevitable um, and it happened all over the world, right? So um, as the world got to terms with COVID-19, as news of vaccines came on board, and as the vaccines started getting deployed from late last year um, in some parts of the world, economic activity simply picked up um, and crude oil, crude oil prices picked up as well. So it's, 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 a, it's a double whammy. You had economies working, getting back to work, productivity increasing significantly, almost as sharply as they went down. So economists had expected that the recovery path or the recovery graph was going to be a V-shaped graph. In other words, there is a sharp decline and then there is a sharp increase. And that's exactly what has happened. So the only bonus now is that our recovery from the recession has happened much, well, not much, but a bit quicker than we had expected. We thought we were going to be out of it by Q1 2021, but it looks like we've, we've gotten out of it actually by Q4 2020, which is, which is fantastic news. But the main reason really, as far as I'm concerned, um, is, the, is the recovery of oil prices. As you will know, um, crude, oil, crude, crude oil prices as at today is well over $60 per barrel, which is the same level it was last January, last year, January, January 2020, before COVID-19. So it looks like we're back to where we started. We've suffered a setback. It's time to start moving again. All right, Mr. Shumito, let's try and understand this particular figure in real terms. 0.11% uh, uh, growth. Uh, a lot of people would say that's so marginal. It's not even up to 1%. But what does this really translate to in, uh, in the real sense of the word and on the macroeconomic level? Um, excuse me. So, so it's 0.11%. The first thing to note is that it's above zero. 
that's the first thing you know you celebrate your little wins um <laughs> and then you you take it from there so 0.11 percent might look like it's not a lot but it's better than you know being below zero um and then when you break down the important thing to note is when you break actually break down that number uh you find that there are there are pockets of good news embedded in that um so if you break the um, the GDP growth rates and GDP activity down into the oil and non-oil um, um, components. You find that the oil component actually is still in research. Um, so um, the oil sector grew by, I think, a negative 8.9, um, or yeah, I think about 8.9 um, in Q4 2020. Um, the non-oil sector actually grew by, by well over two percent. So, so it's almost as if the reason that we have not um, exited is the impact that oil as as a commodity has on the overall economy. So, if we were not so reliant on oil, we would have done far better than this already. Um, um, and if you if you disaggregate the non-oil sector. Uh, GDP further, you find that we've actually experienced significant growth in certain sectors, even during this recession. Um, and as, as, as we've recovered, that recovery is actually um, 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 accounted for by the agri sector, which actually grew by well over 5%. Um, uh, telecoms, um, services, you know, so so we have we, we actually have some good news in that number, and depending on what sector of the economy you are operating, um, things might not be as bad as they look. Uh, but but the expectation is that by Q1 2021, now um, that 0 0.11 will definitely translate into something. You know, something we'll, we'll be talking in the region of uh, you know over one percent, maybe even up to two percent um, GDP growth. Okay, Mr. Shapiro. Q1 2021. Uh, looking at the, you know, the data released by the MBS yesterday, we saw that non-oil sector GDP, agriculture, even telecommunications, as you said, were, you know, majorly responsible for this growth. Yeah. Is this not an indication of the clamor we've been having years and years on that Nigeria needs to focus on diversifying her economy away from oil? Absolutely, you know, and um, this this thing actually buttresses a point I make all the time. Every time I get the opportunity, I say, our economy is diversified. We, we have to understand this. The economy itself is diversified. Majority of economic activity is happening outside of the oil sector. The problem we have is not a diversification of the economy itself. It's a diversification of our forex revenue earning potential on the one hand yeah. right and secondly is a um and a boosting of local production so that we consume what we produce more than we um consume what is imported the imbalance the structural imbalance we have in this economy is not so much a diversification of economic activity it's a it's it's um a, a, a misnomer in the relationship between import and export. We, we have a, um, um, a negative trade deficit. We have a trade deficit all the time. Our current account balances are always negative compared to the rest of the world. And that's what the government needs to, to, to fix it. We need to produce what we consume. So okay. everything that is happening within the economy, including the consistent devaluation of our Naira, is hinged around this issue, not so much on diversification. It's about production. We need to encourage manuf the manufacturing sector, the real sector. We need to encourage um, um, the services sector uh, so that we do not depend on things that are brought in, which will then put pressure on your, um, on your exchange rates and drive all other indicators of economic activity into the negative, you know, including inflation and all of that. And, that, and that's what we're experiencing. So somebody made a point yesterday that, oh, we've exited the recession. We're now 0.11% in growth, and yet inflation continues to rise. 
the, the you know the same MBS released an inflation report that showed inflation is now over 16 percent, um, even when we're exiting recession. Okay. You know, so you find that, that that's that's a bit funny. So and the reason is exactly what I just said now. All right, staying with that talk on inflation, you know, would this mean that the Monetary Policy Committee would now, you know, start to rise interest rates again to fight inflation? Absolutely. So, so the, 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 the battle that they've been fighting is, a, is, a, is, a, is almost like a philosophical battle between growth and price control. On the one hand, you want to encourage the economy to grow. You know, you want to allow for liquidity in the system so the banks can lend and all that. So they've been trying to hold all the monetary policy, you know, and, and um, yeah, uh, rates and, um, and instruments constant over the last two or quarters or thereabouts. But now that we are exiting um, um, the recession, they will have to start thinking of how to rein in the inflation. Um, but I think that they probably will still have to wait a bit, you know, because of the lagging effect. Um, what you, whatever we're experiencing now is as a result of policies that were put in place six months ago. So the MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee is not going to do anything um, drastic in the immediate. They'll probably wait for the next quarter to see, to ensure that the growth that we have now has stabilized and we don't, you know, revert into a recession if they act too suddenly. Okay. You know, and I, and I think that's what the, that, that's the challenge that um, they will have to uh, balance. If, if, all right, if all right, Mr. Shopiton, let me just um, take um, the angle of um, the average uh, Nigerian uh, who goes to the market, you know, to buy tomatoes or to buy onions and to buy rice. You know, we're telling him that uh, Nigeria's GDP uh, gross domestic product has risen or there's a growth of 0.11%. And again, like you said, the MBS, you know, brought some very crazy uh, figures uh, of inflation. What does this really translate in that there's a growth of 0.11%? Is it like Uhuru for Nigeria? Is it like um, the Nigerian will go to the market and over time, um, very soon, they, the prices of goods and services will start falling down? Yeah, you know, the irony of the Nigerian economy um, and all of the indicators of growth and development that has been always used as financial people and economic people bankers, is that there's a massive disconnect between ordinary person on the street and the right so there, there's um there's a concept that people are now talking of which is inclusive growth so your gdp is growing how is that growth affecting the um balkanizer how is it affecting the woman that is selling pepper in the market? How is it affecting the barber? You know, um, and a lot of times you find that there is no correlation. It's not feeling it because the economy itself is extremely inefficient, and um, a lot of that production simply doesn't trickle down into um, 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 an, an improvement in the quality of life for the average man on the street. So it's another challenge that the government needs to needs to fix. We need to ensure that our growth is inclusive. And the only way to make that happen is you revert back to those basic issues of things like electricity supply. Until you fix fundamental problems like that, no matter how much GDP you say you are recording, the average man on the street's life will probably continue to, 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 to be a bit of a misery. You know, so 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 that that's that's the challenge I think that the Nigerian economy has always faced, and and I think for the short term we will continue to face. You know, still happening on this issue about how the MBS, the IMF release, you know, statistics that you know excite everybody. We've existed exited recession. GDP has grown through so and so percent. But like we mentioned, the ordinary everyday Nigerian, you know, is still having a hard time surviving. Why then should people trust the figures? I mean, these are the questions they're having. What trust then should we have in these figures if you're saying the economy is growing, but my employees are not increasing my salary, I go to the markets, and things are still expensive? Um, they, 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 they don't trust the figures anyway. <laughs> Most people, the ordinary man on the streets just hears this thing. They don't even know what it means. And, to them, to them, it's not important. The people that these numbers are important to are people in the organized private sector, 
you know, and in government and, and the formal economy, you know. So, so, so that's, that's why um, the onus is on, you know, the regulatory authorities, the central bank, the finance ministry, and all of that to ensure that even as this growth is happening and as economic activity is happening, that we focus on human development indicators. Those are the things that really, really count when it comes to these people. Of course, the economy matters. The economy is critically important to their lives, but there has to be a connection between what's going on in the economy and what's going on in people's private economies. You know, right now, the gap between the private economy of the average citizen and the general national economy is wide. There needs to be a closing up of that gap with deliberate policy actions from the central bank with deliberate policy actions, from uh, the Ministry of Finance with deliberate policy actions, from the Ministry of Trade and Investment, you know, all of those um, bodies and authorities that are responsible for um, encouraging economic activity, especially at the bottom of the ladder. You know, that bottom of the ladder part of, 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 of uh, the bottom of the pyramid part of our economy is, is extremely important and is continuously neglected. So we focus our energies on all of these numbers that, you know, when the, um, the blue chip companies that are posted on the stock exchange hear them, they're excited because they immediately will feel the impact, they immediately will benefit from it, you know. But things like inflation, right, are the things that affect the man on the street. Like you said, you know, 16% um, um, in inflation for uh, uh, December, January, what that automatically means is that the average man on the streets disposable income has reduced. When you break that down further, you find that food inflation is even 20 percent. You know, so I mean, that's 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 crazy. 20 percent food inflation in uh, in this modern times when most economies that are, are trending single digits, uh, even or even below five percent. Ghana, beside us here, the inflation is less than 10 percent. You know, so. That's, that's, that's the challenge that government has to really, really address if you want to see an improvement in the life of the man on the street and, okay. and, and the common man. Otherwise, right. exiting the recession means absolutely nothing to, to them. The they really right. don't care because, you know, their life is still exactly as it was last month. And All as right. it was, in fact, it's probably worse. <laughs> All and right, Mr. Shopita. Great points you've made there. You're saying uh, the, the key points and the key takeaways I'm taking from your speech, you, you know, basically is that we the government needs to improve foreign exchange revenues. They say we need to also increase local production, you know, so we can shift away from, you know, crude Absolutely. oil and oil, you know, and uh, that we should develop Absolutely. our human capacity indicators. Maybe if we put all those factors together, Nigeria maybe can just, you know, avoid slipping into recession again. So thank you very much, Mr. Shegu Shopito. Absolutely. I mean, and I think, yeah. Go ahead. You can wrap up. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you so much. So, yes, that's uh, our time on uh, the first segment here, talking about Nigeria, existing recession, and our GDP growth of 0.11%. Uh, our next guest is standing by to help us dissect security matters in Nigeria after the break. <laughs>